I'm Michelle Yana-Chan and welcome to Fast Track's Insider Guide, my top travel tips on where to go over the coming weeks. My latest adventure was climbing Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in Western Europe, straddling the French-Italian border. Look out for that report later in the month. And for anyone wanting to hit the peaks now, it's one of the best times to visit Nepal after the monsoon and before the temperatures fall. Next year, new trekking routes are opening in the region, including January's launch of the Nepal section of the Great Himalaya Trail, which in its entirety will be the longest and highest alpine walking track in the world. Four and a half thousand kilometers across Bhutan, China, India, Nepal, and Pakistan. The aim is to open up some wilder, more remote parts of the Himalayas to attract trekkers away from congested areas like Annapurna and Everest. Australia is hosting the Ashes series, one of the world's biggest cricket contests, pitting title holders England against their down under rivals. And just before the Ashes begin, try to catch the three day manly festival of surfing starting November 18th. I'd go just for the ferry ride across Sydney Harbour to this my favourite city suburb. There'll be four days of surf contests with some national legends and world champions as well as music, art, film and fashion. Take a stroll to Shelley Beach while you're there along the coast for a picture perfect look back at the venue. 2010 marks 50 years since the primatologist Jane Goodall began her pioneering work with chimpanzees in what is now Gombe National Park, Tanzania. Stay on the shores of Lake Tanganyika before setting off to track chimps in the forest. Back at base you can meet researchers to learn more about animal behaviour Goodall's work is one of the longest running studies of animals in the wild, in which she's learned how these apes make and use tools, communicate and express emotion. It's also the 50th anniversary of Joy Adamson's best-selling novel, Born Free, the story of her efforts to rehabilitate orphaned lion cubs back into the wild in Kenya. Up on the banks of Lake Nyavasha, you can visit Elsamir, Adamson's former home, and now a conservation centre with a small museum. Don't miss a trip out to Crescent Island, the lake's home to Kenya's largest population of waterfowl. And out on Kenya's coastline, Lamu celebrates the 10th year of its cultural festival. From November 25th through 28th, East Africa's oldest Swahili town will host diverse events with dow races to donkey races, Sufi music to Bollywood pop, as well as traditional dance and Swahili performance poetry. Lamu was one place on a list put out by the non-profit Global Heritage Fund, which noted the most vulnerable heritage sites in the world, blaming war, looting and rapid overdevelopment. The list also included historic Fort Santiago and Intramuros in Manila, the Philippines, in northern Cyprus, Famagusta, an ancient maritime town, and Mirador in Guatemala, a centerpiece of Mayan civilization. This time of year, there should be fair, sunny weather in all three destinations, whose future will partly depend on smart, sustainable tourism. On a similar theme, I've just been at Angkor in Cambodia, exploring the challenges faced by increased tourism to that spectacular monument. And while I was there, I noticed a buzz about the visual and performance art scene in the country. From November 20th for one week, the Angkor Photo Festival in Siem Reap will focus on emerging Southeast Asian photographers. There'll be exhibitions and slideshows every night in locations across the city, including the Gallery of John McDermott and the Arts Lounge in the Hotel de la Paix. All events are free. Thanks for checking in with my Insider Guide. Until next time, happy traveling.